So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my Next.js setup from scratch. We're going to install Next.js and I'm going to install the packages and plugins that I usually uh, install in every Next.js project. And then we're going to deploy to Vercel. Actually, we're going to also turn this project that we create into a template in our GitHub repository so we can use it as a base for every other project. And then we also are going to deploy this to Vercel. Very basic, but uh, a setup that you would probably need in the start of any project. I thought I would just walk you through my project here. So let's go to the code and see where we can start. So in the documentation for Next.js, if you go to the installation, you can run this command, npx create next app at latest. I like pnpm as the package manager. It's faster and it's also cooler. So you can use npm or uh, pnpm or yarn, whatever you like. So I'll go pnpx create um, next app at latest. Now after this, you can uh, provide the name of the folder or project that you want to create. Right now I am inside of the project next.ts. So I'm, I'm just going to pass dot. This is going to install next.js in this specific uh, directory or in the current directory. It's asking me whether or not I, I want TypeScript for this project. I'm going to select yes. ESLint, yes. Tailwind, CSS, yes. Source directory, no. You, again, this is a matter of personal preference. The app router, yes. Do we want to customize the uh, import aliases? No, the add sign is okay. So it's going to go ahead and install the dependencies. And from there, we can add the different dependencies that I usually add. The first one that I like to add is this Prettier Tailwind plugin. This is going to allow Prettier to also sort Tailwind classes because you're, if you're using Tailwind utility classes. So let me just go ahead. So we have already installed inside of our code. We can see this project over here. So um, coming back to this um, package, uh, we need to install Prettier itself as a dependency of our project and then Prettier plugin Tailwind CSS. So let's just go ahead and copy this part of the code. So I'm going to go pmpm and then add dash d is going to install it as a development dependency. And once I have this, I'm going to bring in some Prettier config. So I'm going to create a, a Prettier RC file inside of my project. This is where I can pass in some setup or some config for my Prettier. I usually share this setup inside of every project. So if other team members are working on the same project, it's going to just pick up the same exact uh, formatting um, for everyone. So we don't have, we don't run into conflicts uh, of formatting based on different settings on other people's devices. So with this, if I go ahead and PMPM PM dev, we should be able to see our live development server. I can open it up on port 3000. Okay, great. So the next step is I will go to my homepage. I'll just delete everything and I'll just continue with a simple functional component. Typically, I'll just put in a section here with some paddings doesn't really matter, but this is just the boilerplate code that I have in um, all of the projects or the starting point of the projects. So an H1 text tree text Excel and font bold that says next TS starter. Let's just save this. Can also remove that React import up top. And the other thing is in the global CSS, you could just remove this custom CSS that was added. And now for this container to work, I usually add this setting or extend the theme inside of my Tailwind config. So instead of this theme, I would just bring in the container so you can pass in the container center. This is to just enable, um, let me just close this off. Inside of my page, I have passed this container to the div you can pass in this container to your theming uh, Tailwind, which is going to create that container class, which is centered, and you can have some paddings depending on the size of your screen. Now everything is centered inside of this container that has uh, the width changes depending on the size of the screen. And that's all we need to set up our Next.js app from scratch. 
So let's just stop the development server. Uh, let's add everything and then commit dash m let's say initial setup now with this done we can go to our github repository and then i can create a new repository i can call this next ts and create this repository i'm going to go ahead and add this remote let's also make sure our main branch is main and then we're going to push everything to our repo over here let's clear this up and if i refresh this page should be able to see our code now if i go to vercel which is not open here so let's go to vercel now from here i can create a new project now this is going to pick up if your github is not connected to vercel you can connect it it's very easy and if it is connected it's just going to pick up on your repos i can just import this uh, if there's any specific environment variables at this point it's just a beginning or it's a it's a starter kit so i don't have anything set up there i just need to click deploy and this is going to go ahead and deploy while this is happening let's go back to our repository and i'm going to show you how to turn this into a template that you can use later on now one way is to just every time you can clone this but cloning this is just going to talk to this one single repository instead if you come to the settings and mark this template as a repository when you go back to uh, your repo you can now you see this use this as a template this is going to use this code create a new repo based on this it's going to just basically copy it and then you can clone that as a new project into your local machine and start working there so that's pretty much it to turn a starter kit into a repo or into a template that you can use because pretty much every project if you're using Next.js is going to start from a starting point. Now this is my starting point. You might want to add more uh, packages or plugins to it or have a different setup, but you can just do the same thing or create the same template for yourself that you can reuse it every time. Now going back to Vercel, this should be done by now and we now have a a completely deployed application now deploying this to Vercel for a template is not necessary because you're going to basically use that template to copy or as the starter of every project that you create but assuming that you're creating a project or I'm creating a project I always start from a template create the starter kit and deploy it to Vercel so as I am making a progress in the project it's always deployed to Vercel live instead of creating the project and making a humongous progress and then trying to go live or push it to Vercel and then at that point you might uh, encounter different problems or different build errors I'm going to mitigate that with uh, just doing this as the first step so as I'm making a progress in the project it's always also building and deploying to Vercel so if there's any problem I would know ahead of time uh, so that I can solve it step by step rather than having to deal with it at the end. So that's pretty much it for setting up a Next.js app from the scratch, making it into a template that you can use for other projects and also deploying it to Vercel. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments like always and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.